Hey everyone, Ashish Sani this side from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to another exciting video in the series of ESP IDF. I'm sure you guys have already seen my last video where I have already introduced you to the Firebase in which we have already worked with the real time database of the Firebase account. So basically, we are going to continue with that only. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate you that how you can interface your soil moisture sensor and you can upload the values of your soil moisture sensor in the real time. And in fact, it's not going to be a just digital values. It's completely going to be a analog value and that we are going to send in the real time. And on the basis of that, we can perform whatever functionalities we want to do. So this is all that we are going to cover up today. I hope you're going to like it. So let's move ahead and let's understand that how are we going to connect this. So let's do that. All right, everyone. Now let's start with the coding part and let's understand how do we get the values of your soil moisture sensors from the ESP32 by using the ESP IDF? On your screen, you can see I already have the project opened where I have already written the code for you so that you don't have to do all the stuff from the scratch. So for that, firstly, I'll go with the firebase underscore config dot H. And uh, this is all the uh, like parameters that we have already set in here. SSID, password, API key, database URL, user email and user password. These values are not written right now just because I have already shown you uh, like from where we get these values so that you can put them into your project inside the firebase underscore configuration file so that it can be fetched accordingly and it can be used into your project. So this is what we have already done. Now you can uh, watch that video and in fact I'll recommend you to watch that video first if you don't want to make any mistake while putting up the values in here. So just watch that video and I'll add the link in the video so you can check that. Now let me go to the main.cpp where we have the main functionality of this project. So basically today I'll show you that how are we going to fetch the ADC value of your soil moisture sensors with respect to the ESP32 and the ESP IDF, we will simply fetch that value and we will simply use that. And just because this time your soil moisture sensor is not going to be used as a digital sensor, so that is the reason we will be simply getting the value as an ADC value and just because we will be using the ADC and that will be of a 12-bit ADC which will be giving you the value into that range and that range will become from 0 to 4095. So we will simply get the values into this range depending on the conductivity or you can say the soil moisture of your soil moisture sensor. And in fact, I'll show you the demonstration as well. Like when do you get the 4095 value? When do you get the zero value? Or when do you get the values in between? So this is what exactly uh, we are going to cover up. Now, let me start with the coding part so that I can explain you that how we have done it inside this. So over here, uh, the code is basically mixed up just because we are not only going to fetch the ADC values of your uh, soil moisture. In fact, we will get that value first and then we will push those values into the real time database on your Firebase account, which we have created in a previous video. So I'll simply do that and that is the reason you can see over here we have all the include files or you can say the libraries where we have the Firebase configuration, where we have the Firebase app, real time database, values, JSON. So we have all those stuff and in fact this stuff we have already seen in a previous video as well. So this is all the stuff. Now let's start further. Some of the things are similar or you can say some of the things are same which is the connectivity of your Firebase to your ESP32. And uh, let me go to that code first so that I can show you what is new and what is the old code, right? So you can see this selected area, selected code, which I'm showing you right here. Uh, this one. Firstly, we are going to connect it to the Wi-Fi network so that we will have the connectivity or you can say the internet connectivity on our ESP32 
similarly we will put the credentials like what credentials we are going to use to connect to a firebase account so this is the user email and user password this is going to authenticate with respect to the api key that we will provide under this firebase underscore configuration similarly once we have this detail once we are authenticated we will log in to that uh, firebase account and once we are logged in we will access the real-time database in which we want to upload the value or you can say we want to read the values so this is what exactly we are doing and this is what we have already seen in a previous video as well and this time we want to get a new data and that new data is going to be coming from here you can see firstly we are defining that what pin we are going to use and what attend db we are going to use in this or you can say it is the input voltage of ADC will be attenuated extending the range of the measurement and you can see over here this is also given the description for that right so basically this is just to define that uh, uh, what type of values we want to get and in what range we will be getting uh, the value for right so this is how we are defining its ADC underscore channel underscore four and uh, this pin is basically linked to pin number G32 and now you must be thinking like uh, how do i know that this is linked to pin number g32 so just a minute let me show you that either so this is the data sheet of your uh, esp32 so in here this is input output pin number 32 and adc1 underscore channel 4 so basically this is where we get to know that this is the pin which we are using and this is channel 4. Similarly, if we will be using pin number 33, then it will be ADC1 underscore channel 5. And in the similar way, we have total 10 channels starting from ADC1 underscore CH0 to ADC1 underscore CH9, which is uh, over here, you can see, right? So in this way, we have total a uh, 10 number of ADC pins which you can use to get the ADC values from your different sensors. So this is where we get the value from, right? Now let's go back to the code. So in this way, we have defined what pin we are going to use. Now further, we have to initialize what uh, variables we are going to use, what handlers we are going to use. And uh, this is basically that handlers that we have defined for that. And once we have handled everything, once we have simply initialized the configuration along with the ADC handler, we have also initialized the configuration for ADC so that we can fetch the value in one shot. So basically this is ADC underscore one shot underscore config underscore channel, which we are using in this case. And uh, in this, we are simply defining which channel we are using for this. So example underscore ADC one underscore CHAN zero is the one which we have defined over here, like which pin we are going to use, right? So this is how we have initialized our configuration. Once we are done with the initialization, uh, then we have to start reading up the values of your soil moisture sensor and to further push the values accordingly, right? So initially I'm setting up that the value will be zero. And after that, we are starting up a loop, which will be an infinite loop. And we can exit that loop depending on the conditions. But currently, I don't want to put any condition. That is the reason I'm simply reading up that value and I'm storing it inside this variable ADC underscore raw, which I have initialized in the beginning, which you can see uh, over here, right? This is static integer, right? In this way, we are storing it. And once we have that value, we are simply storing it inside this new data json variable inside that we have specified that i will be having a parameter soil moisture which will hold the value of my soil moisture so this is how i'm putting up that value and once i have that value i am putting it inside my plant database and inside that i'll be having this soil moisture where, which will contain this value which is this one right so in this way i'm doing it and i am repeating this process every second so that i can get the values from that now delay it's up to you like what delay you want to put but i prefer putting it uh, for every second so that's why i'm putting it this way but you can increase it or decrease it as well so this is how I'm doing it. And finally, after I'm done with that, I'm just deleting it so that we can reinitialize it and we can 
get a clear value inside this so this is how i'm actually doing it and this is the complete process uh, to read up the values of your soil moisture and to further push it now it's time to further push this code uh, to the esp32 so that we can start reading up the adc values and we can accordingly uh, push the data into the real time database so let's start doing that for that let me open up the terminal over here let me follow the process so the code is uploaded successfully and now you can see the values are getting put successfully onto the real time database currently my soil moisture is not uh, put into the soil or into the water or somewhere so that is the reason we are getting the by default value as 4095 and the same value must be pushing on the firebase account as well so let me show you that either you can see this is the plant and this is the soil moisture which is holding this value now let me put this inside the water for now so that i can show you so currently i'm going to put it inside the salt water so salt water simply means it's a good conductor of electricity so that is the reason i'm using it so when i'm going to put it you can see the value drops to 746 797 812 if i try to get it out you will see the change the value start increasing and once i take it out completely it's 4095 so in this way we have done it now once we have done this we can go to the real soil and we can start checking up the values like how we will get it depending on the soil moisture in the soil so this is the way how it works i hope this is clear now let's move to the real time checking of that so let's move there all right everyone so you can see we have the plant and pot in which we have the uh, soil and uh, you can see the content level and uh, the soil moisture sensor is already dipped inside the soil depending on that uh, the moisture content looks very good and uh, similarly you can see on the screen we have the values for that and that is about 4066 or something and uh, if you will simply take the soil moisture out you will notice that the value will simply change to 4095 and if i will put it back you will see the value drops down and just because currently it's in between so let's say if i will try to uh, put the water what's going to happen so i'll simply pour some water in it and you can notice the value drops so it's like 874 uh 948 885 so in this way you can see the value is changing so this is how your soil moisture content values you can read from the soil moisture sensor and depending on that you can upload this value and not just uploading you can do various other things as well so this was all about this i hope you guys have understood this and you have really enjoyed this session so if you have enjoyed this video and you have found this video very helpful please hit on the like button and also if you are new to this channel click on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any further videos from our channel so this was it see you in our next video till then bye bye and happy learning